Sì, 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 però sì. alla fine se anche avanza un centinaio non è un problema. Bene, ottimo. Okay, good morning again. We start uh, the first session of uh, the symposium. It is about theory and practice for temporal design. Let me start, since you are still going to take your seats, uh, with a personal memory about temporal design. And uh, it was uh, almost 10 years ago, and I was organizing, together with the Italian Society of Acoustics and the Florentine Engineers, some, uh, uh, they were called Giornate di Studio in uh, Environmental Acoustics uh, in Florence, uh, and uh, in, the, in the City Hall of Florence, uh, we organized this uh, uh, days in which we discuss about the several issues of acoustics and uh, that one ten years ago was about uh, the uh, acoustic design, the acoustic design of uh, cities and of buildings uh, and I asked to my friend and my maestro as I said, uh, uh, Alessandro Cocchi to come and give a lecture on this theme and he said no I will give a lecture on uh, temporal design. I said what is temporal design or what uh, is the connection among temporal design and this. So you will see. And in fact, we, we saw that uh, there are many connections among temporal design and the other issues that the acousticians are dealing with, especially with the acoustic design. And this is one of the subject of uh, the conference and of this section as well. So you can imagine that uh, it is my great pleasure and honor to be the chair of this session and to introduce to the first uh, lectures that is given by Professor Ando, again, and uh, the title is Stress, uh, no, sorry, uh, yes, Stress and Preference uh, Factors Determining the Dialysis Introduction Age. Uh, the timing, just uh, one service information, the timing uh, of each presentation is uh, 20 minutes, but uh, uh, I kindly ask you to stay within 15 minutes uh, for the presentation for giving time okay. to questions, uh, remarks and comments. Okay. Thank you okay. and please, the floor is yours. Thank you, Chairman. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm now uh, getting get into the uh, example of stress and the uh, preference. And the, uh, I myself is the patient on the uh, uh, treating uh, by the uh, uh, hospital uh, diaries. Uh, I, I just into, uh, uh, interested in the uh, 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 diaries introduction introduction age. Uh, the sometimes the uh, uh, so young people get into the di diaries uh, because of the uh, kidney problem. Okay, and the. Uh, yeah, I, uh, because Yes, 
Okay, it is time for some questions or comments, please. Uh, 
Time for one more short question. If is it uh, one? Okay. Thank you again to Professor Ando for this uh, interesting presentation. Uh, the next uh, the next presentation will be my presentation. So I introduce myself. I change. Uh, And uh, the title is Acoustics and Global Comfort in the Habitat of Anthropocene. Uh, I prepared this presentation together with my colleagues from Vian Rose. And I start from uh, a picture that I took in Rome, in the center of Rome, of a wall where there is uh, this uh, sign. The uh, future is uh, not what it used to be. Uh, then I this sentence remains in my mind, and I check on the internet. I saw that this uh, quote uh, from uh, Paul Valéry and Paul Strand, uh, poets and uh, writers uh, have used uh, this expression, and also in uh, a book uh, dealing uh, with uh, the climate change uh, and the energetic crisis, they use this uh, title. The future is not what it used to be, what we were expecting it was used to be. So I move from this, and giving some uh, introduction uh, and some terms, some keywords. The habitat. Habitat means uh, he lives in Latin. It's a place where the characteristics, some environmental or uh, uh, land use characteristics, allow a given species to live, develop, reproduce itself, and of course affects the quality of life which can increase or decrease depending on climate and demographic changes. Uh, here you see some of the natural, sorry, I have the mouse, but it's better this one, natural habitats and the artificial or, as we say, man-made uh, habitats that are cities especially, the ancient Rome, New York City, and a new infrastructure system in a big city. Uh, another new word that we must learn is Anthropocene. The Anthropocene is a new epoch that is uh, dating uh, from the beginning of a significant human impact uh, on the Earth's geology and ecosystems. The idea of defining a new era, a uh, geological era, based uh, on the impact of human civilization on the planet was first proposed in 2000 by the Nobel Prize uh, uh, Paul Kreuzen that wrote uh, a book that is Welcome to the Anthropocene. Then a team of 34 experts work on it. Um, and then in 2016, at the 35th uh, Geological Congress uh, uh, in South Africa, uh, it was established that the old, uh, sorry, the old definition of uh, Holocene as the current era that uh, dated uh, from uh, 
one, uh, uh, sorry, 11,070 hundred years ago, uh, should be substituted by a new one, a new definition of a new era that has a starting point 1950, again 1950, like uh, Vicianda said before, because from 1950, the impact of the humans on uh, the earth that are measured in terms of uh, stones uh, and uh, there are many, many criteria are uh, crucial. So it is Anthropocene. And the Anthropocene uh, has some karma. You know that uh, karma in the uh, India, not only India, in uh, religious and uh, philosophical terminology, is the fruit of the action carried out uh, by every living person or living being, living body. Uh, when virtuous actions are performed, a positive karma is produced. When non-virtuous actions are performed, negative karma is produced. So, if we investigate which are the negative and the positive karma of the Anthropocene, we see that uh, it's very easy to collect <laughs> negative karmas, uh, higher temperatures, uh, raising of the sea level, ashes and fossils, you see there, and of course, noise. We have uh, one big negative karma, that is urbanization, and uh, uh, the production of substantial and irreversible changes in many areas of the planet due to urbanization. But there are also positive karma. We don't have to think only negative. Positive karma are health, communication, technological progress in work, instruction, energy, culture, quality of life, and comfortable soundscapes. And sustainability can be the solution because can stop the planet degradation and discomfort of its inhabitants. If we follow this idea, things are going better. And uh, it's uh, good that the former uh, United Nations president, uh, in his last uh, speech before leaving the, the seat, uh, said that the biggest challenge in the new century is to adopt the idea that seems abstract, but is not, the sustainable development. So the keywords of the urbanization can change. These are the classical industrialization, construction, infrastructures, and so on. And the, uh, the objective that better define the urbanization is dimension, intensity, density, but we can change it toward participation, communication, urban performance, environment, and quality of life, smartness, and sustainability. The development of society must change according to these uh, new keywords, or trying to join the new keywords with the old one as far as possible, because there are new landscapes and new soundscapes in cities. And the landscapes and soundscape of Anthropocene, where the urban scenarios are made of building infrastructures, noisy places, but also hopefully quiet areas, can consider the fact that uh, the landscape and the soundscape is not only or not more what we see from a window or what we see in front of us, but it is something where we are inside. We are a part of the landscape, a part of the soundscape. As well as uh, Magritte, the famous painter, represented in the series of pictures called The Human Condition. It means that we must enlarge the view, considering also ourselves, considering also the place where we are, and working for making the place where we live, uh, cities or buildings, a part of a landscape and a part of a soundscape that is coherent with this new idea and the new keywords. Acoustician can go towards the global comfort and toward the uh, new approach that uh, I have introduced with this uh, first uh, part of my presentation. How and where? Developing noise maps and noise action plans for cities. The acoustic planners and the designer of the actions and the solutions should apply some holistic approaches to noise mitigation and reduction of annoyance, but also to making possible the listening of good sounds in cities and in buildings. And uh, where the negative karma are evident, 
Noise control and soundscape design are crucial, and one of the objectives, if not the main objective, should be the maximization of the pleasantness of the place. The preference, as said, or pleasantness in another terms, of a place. Global satisfaction of people living or working or doing their everyday activities in a place can be reached if we consider sustainability and the positive karma that we have listed before. The acousticians, the acoustic designers, uh, should take in account layouts and materials, multisensorial approach, and participation. Uh, all this uh, stuff is usually represented with uh, chain and wheels. It is nice, because there is not a, a linear order of things to do, but it's something that is connected, is chained, is a part of a web. Very shortly, let's see some of them. The circular economy. Circular economy is, in its definition, uh, an economic system that can regenerate itself and uh, where material flows, biological, that are capable to be reintegrated into the biosphere, and technical ones that are destined to be revalorized with entering the biosphere. Circular economy means uh, recyclable and recycled materials. Multisensory approach. We can consider not only noise annoyance as something that we have to solve with some mitigation solution, but something that is connected with sound quality, which is connected with physiology, genetics, visual, taste, smell, touch, the other senses, and finally with psychology, with multisensory perspective that is also linked to aesthetics, the aesthetics of place. We should design something that is also beautiful, not only effective and functional. And we can do a better design as acoustician, but in general as designer, if we consider public participation and participatory planning and design. This is the general scheme provided by, uh, not provided, required by the Environmental Noise Directive as one of the main results that the planners uh, do and it's uh, the public participation it means the involvement of public since the very early earliest stage of uh, the planning of a new urban area involving the stakeholders in uh, strategic design and the final users in uh, solution design the holistic ap approach must consider the smartness and the serendipity this is uh, a method that brings to an indicator of uh, smartness and serendipity factors, but we have, uh, uh, with my group, we have applied it uh, to global comfort in uh, new uh, EU-funded projects that we are carrying on for uh, the uh, realization of uh, noise low emission zone. Um, there are some relative indicators uh, for uh, the categories of smartness and comfort that are uh, connected to the wheel of smartness, the wheel of smart cities, that is uh, the well-known, where all the factors uh, that uh, deal with the smart city implementation are represented with uh, some uh, variables, and uh, the specific comfort variables uh, uh, each one representing a subcategory are assembled in uh, smartest index that are finally uh, joined in formulas also with the cost and benefit that consider not only the main cost of a solution but also the secondary costs coming from serendipic effects, coming from other results that you can get doing something for solving one problem, one environmental problem, you can have some added values, added benefit in other fields. And all this can be formalized. I go to the end of my presentation. I have three more minutes. I am my checking the time. And just showing some examples that uh, we have implemented in our work of uh, urban planners, uh, acoustic urban planners and acoustic designers. This one maybe is a little bit uh, uh, not uh, coherent to what, what Alessandro Cocchi said before in terms of planning the new cities. 
uh, but uh, we see we have experimented this new uh, approach to the urban planning that is based on the polycentrism and the polycentric idea. Uh, it means that uh, uh, the networks uh, that are uh, established in cities must be used for uh, giving a rational design to uh, areas uh, where services, cultural uh, topics uh, are developed in a polycentric way. It means that there is not a circular concentric uh, model that is of course the most uh, followed, but is a new model especially doing in cities where there are there have been uh, problems uh, in uh, uh, suburban areas that are only like uh, uh, dormitory areas uh, you can uh, requalify them adding uh, some services or giving them the uh, status of uh, center and no more periphery uh, going on with some more uh, uh, how can I say, uh, visual uh, uh, examples. This one uh, is uh, an example of urban design for global comfort that is given by schools and playground where barriers can be not just barriers. Noisy schoolyards can be converted from sensitive areas affected by noise to quiet areas open to pupils, relatives, dwellers, maybe exhibitions or uh, shows, entertainment, and making people uh, going there and having fun there, not just the pupils and the babies, but also the adults. So these are some examples that we have realized uh, in Italy, according to the noise mitigation plan, but solving the problem of the noise mitigation, also adding some other uh, components to the barriers. Components can be playground, like playgrounds or tables or blackboards, things like that. Uh, the same principle has been applied to uh, protected trails in noisy areas. This is another good idea that has been also recognized as, as the, a good idea from the European Union that is improving as much the, the creation of tranquility, trails, green zone, and noise low emission zone. The low emission zone are usually intended as zone with low air pollution and with uh, low, uh, low levels of traffic, but we have to consider also the noise and also the good soundscapes that we can add to this uh, planning. You see here an example where some uh, Sorry. Well, in, in a green area, some uh, particular uh, uh, flower beds uh, have been designed with uh, uh, sounds, uh, colors, uh, uh, and meaning. Because uh, the, the sounds that are reproduced are songs uh, that uh, regards the same flowers uh, that you can see, and you can smell, and you can touch. Of course, you cannot eat, but... <laughs> Maybe we, we are uh, trying to do something like that, uh, not in this, but in other places. And music can be very helpful. There are many, many uh, kinds of music. We are in a theater, of course, there are some uh, important classical music and composers that have composed the music that we use uh, in the parks and in the green areas, but also modern music can be used, the ambient music, and not only. Let's think about John Cage or Pink Floyd. They have many, many kind of uh, uh, perfect uh, integrated or integrable uh, in the soundscape of cities, uh, uh, songs and musics. Um, okay, we were speaking about uh, why we don't eat, but we can eat in the restaurant. A multi-sensory restaurant is the new frontier of the restaurant, especially in the UK. Uh, they used to design a restaurant where every seat, every place, every table is a special unit where you can have uh, comfort, not only eating good food, but also listening so good sounds, uh, smelling the maybe spices that they are using, that are uh, coming down from the floor, 
and with good acoustics you see this with uh, something like domes this is a solution that we have uh, implemented using some uh, glasses where there are the spices they are real spices with different colors and different smell and uh, the last one uh, multifunction auditoria also the places that are devoted to listening sound can be multifunction. This, is a ch this was just a church that the, they want to use also for conferences, lessons uh, and uh, concerts. And with uh, sustainable materials uh, it has been changed in a multifunctional auditorium, auditorium where with this uh, panel that are and, and uh, uh, baffles pending from the floor and uh, with these uh, walls make with uh, uh, plants uh, we can uh, define several configuration acoustic configuration of the church that is specific designed for specific destination in conclusion uh, what I want to say with my presentation is that the global comfort uh, an holistic approach is based on the idea of planning and designing urban areas and building safeguarding people's safety, health and serenity, respecting the laws of nature and the harmonious development of the place. In this approach the acoustics plays or can play an important role because uh, sound I don't want to say noise. Sound is a funding part of the man habitat environment system. So uh, the competencies of the acousticians are crucial. Uh, some smart and serendipic solutions should be considered, not just to waiting for them, but considered since the very beginning as a part of the global comfort scheme. And they can lead to added values in terms of acoustics benefit for other solutions and for other benefit for the acoustic solution, not increasing costs. And this can uh, bring to achieve the primary objective of the design with one or more secondary pleasant added benefit. Finally, the participation should be implemented by the action planners and by solution designer collecting the stakeholders uh, and the user's opinion on strategic uh, issues and uh, in the designing phase. In a nutshell, we started saying that the future is not what it uh, used to be, uh, but the same poet, Mark Strand, says also in another poem that the future is always beginning now, and we hope that uh, with this uh, uh, kit of uh, measures that are dealing with the temporal design, we can reach uh, this uh, objective. Thank you very much. Okay, if you have it's here, I go there. I change. Please. Thank you for your wonderful presentation. Thank you. Thank you. I was wondering how in the example you showed us the part that music was being played, and that they also lead to a space where exclusion is taking place, but not inclusion, because music. Uh, yeah, yes, of course. No, you're right. It can be a possibility, but the idea of the designers is to work together with the composers or to those that are expert in ambient music to choose the right sounds that can have the double effect of being uh, uh, masking the noise. We have some experts here, they can <laughs> say their opinion about this. Uh, masking the noise uh, or also the sounds uh, coming from other areas uh, and uh, improving uh, the, the pleasantness uh, of the soundscape as an element of landscape of the place of the area where you are. It means that uh, in a square, for example, where there are all the 
men and uh, maybe reading their newspaper and they want just to hear the sound of the birds or the water, natural sounds, they don't want music, we don't put music. If it's not necessary to stop uh, the noise coming from uh, the transport uh, sources and by the other part of the square, so it is not excluding or creating a wall, there are no walls. It's a, a kind of a virtual, not wall, but virtual separation. Other questions? Short one? Okay. So thank you again, and let's go to the third presentation. It's given to uh, Giuseppe Salamone, and we speak again uh, of, uh, but more, more deeply, uh, going deeply in the holistic design, it's true? Uh, the title of the presentation is uh, The Holistic Approach to Habitat Design. Giuseppe, the floor is yours. Very happy to be here uh, to speak about the uh, holistic approach of habitat uh, and design. Uh, this is a method uh, that uh, is uh, the result of many years uh, of experience uh, about uh, in, uh, civil engineering and architectural design of habitat and also experience uh, about the management of city, con city construction. And uh, I uh, begin with uh, this question, why is important to and what does it mean uh, holistic approach? As holistic medicine considers the human being as a whole and uh, not as a result of uh, organ and uh, separated cells, holistic architecture provides uh, the living space uh, is not the, produ the product of many elements but uh, a complete system uh, vibrating uh, with people who live in harmony uh, with the environment and uh, in our habitat. And, uh, in uh, this uh, method, uh, the, the main uh, principle is uh, the following one. Uh, everything uh, surrounding us, uh, external environment and uh, habitat, uh, interior habitat, mirrors uh, our inside uh, world. Uh, we can use this connection to, in order to improve uh, ourselves uh, and um, starting from uh, our surrounding uh, and uh, habitat. So we study uh, the relation uh, between uh, so, uh, No, 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 è per puntature. Ah, ok. Uh, we studied the relation between uh, environment, habitat, and, uh, and uh, people, men, okay? And um, in this approach, uh, which goal is uh, building and uh, design, of course, uh, building a happy habitat, uh, uh, is based on three pillars. Uh, safety, uh, safety, uh, salubrity and serenity. The order is very important because safety regard um, uh, the, the, the uh, reduce uh, uh, accident for people. Salubrity regard the, uh, the, um, the healthy of people. The serenity is uh, uh, something that is not miserable but is very important for happiness. Uh, safety before, why? Because in Europe uh, over 60% uh, um, of fatal accidents are due to domestic accidents. So it's very important to design very well uh, our space. Safety means uh, to feeling nothing bad uh, would happen uh, to our family and us. And uh, this is a uh, these are the main uh, factor of safety uh, in habitat. This is seismic, uh, especially in Italy, is very important uh, safety, seismic, and uh, fire safety. This is uh, an image, uh, uh, the building in London uh, in August. Uh, do you remember the big fire that 
uh, many people dead there. Uh, the surface uh, is protection safety and the system safety. Salubrity uh, is very important because uh, six, uh, normally mm, or six, uh, seventy percent of our time uh, we spend uh, uh, indoor. So it's important to consider the habitat salubrity and comfort. Uh, um, the comfort level is uh, set by many elements, uh, some uh, physical, some chemical, and some uh, biological. They can cause much diseases and illness uh, when not check it uh, in the uh, right uh, uh, modality. Some example uh, regarding also, of course, acoustic uh, question, uh, physical uh, factor, noise, temperature, dampness, uh, electromagnetic pollution. Uh, this is uh, what can cause uh, this, uh, this kind of factor, bronchitis, uh, allergies, uh, age, stress. So chemical factor regarding uh, dangerous uh, substances, uh, mineral uh, fibre, heavy metal. Uh, contain uh, in the material uh, uh, of uh, uh, building and the problem uh, for health are uh, cancer, problem of child, uh, especially pregnancy, woman, etc. Biologic factor, mold, uh, dust, radon gas, radioactivity. Uh, that uh, cause uh, allergies uh, and lower immune defense, uh, bronchial tumor problems. Uh, which solution can we resort uh, for this kind of uh, problem? For example, in an uh, old uh, building, uh, we can uh, uh, realize the air floor for reduce uh, radon gas. The, these are some uh, city construction that I uh, follow personally. Uh, the humidifier and uh, ventilation, for example, for uh, reduce, uh, to reduce uh, mold and condensation, condensation so, uh, with the ventilation, mechanic ventilation, okay? Um, about uh, the material, uh, for example, we can uh, use uh, natural paints uh, for improve the quality of uh, wall. The question is in this, for these two, uh, two first uh, pillars, uh, are how much safe and healthy is uh, in habitat uh, we are designing? And that uh, is are the most important uh, thing. Serenity is uh, the third uh, pillars that is very important because uh, um, uh, concern uh, aspect and factor not measurable but very important for quality in uh, our habitat. And uh, a peaceful habitat uh, is where uh, energy flows in harmonious way, shapes, colors, sound and the materials are well balanced inside uh, our space. All this creates beauty. How to get it? We, uh, I study for from many years uh, this uh, uh, new approach that is uh, an old approach in uh, in uh, in um, uh, in China is uh, Feng Shui uh, is uh, the old China's uh, heart of uh, wine and uh, water. Uh, it's goal uh, to achieve global well-being, uh, finding a dynamic uh, balance, dynamic balance between environment and habitat's energy. Energetic factor for creating a good Feng Shui is uh, a balance uh, be, uh, through these element: colors, shapes, material, sound. So, uh, in the the second pillars healthy uh, about acoustic uh, we reduce uh, the our goal is reduce uh, the noise here is to produce good sound do you know the difference no so uh, the other 
aspect is uh, the, the vital uh, energy uh, the chi flow that is very important for this kind of approach chi is a China's word uh, which uh, which means uh, everything in uh, the universe uh, uh, vital energy maintaining uh, as a continuous and harmonious chi flow is important to achieve positive energy uh, to the environment and people for healthy for uh, uh, serenity peace uh, okay so we study this is uh, some example we study the chi flow uh, and uh, we 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 try to improve uh, this uh, mm, this uh, flow uh, through the uh, a better solution di better distribution in the, the uh, room and uh, very room uh, Every person is connected to their surrounding uh, thought, uh, physical and healthy aspect uh, miserable, so uh, it's important uh, for the first two pillars, and uh, as well uh, as a metaphysic one uh, that is not miserable, but is very important for uh, our happiness, uh, our wellness. The, this parameter change in the time and the space. Uh, we can find some uh, some uh, uh, connection be uh, between uh, uh, holistic approach and temporal design because uh, we study this cycle of uh, the natural natural cycles the night uh, season cycle and the lunar fa phases when we project uh, we design uh, uh, an, an, habit, uh, an habitat with uh, uh, Feng Shui, we consider this uh, factor. Applying Feng Shui principle uh, to architect means uh, making the main habitat and the environment system resound with the nature's laws, which regulate its uh, rit rhythms. This uh, methodological approach, uh, which is the holistic uh, engineers, uh, base matches uh, perfectly with temporal design uh, pursuing a quest for a dynamic and harmonic uh, balance. So the question in this case is how much serene uh, is the habitat uh, we are designing? So we have to uh, try to um, improve our project in this. But uh, this uh, those uh, three pillars uh, are not uh, enough. Uh, we have uh, also two S that mm, in part uh, Sergio speak, uh, speaking before. Uh, one is uh, sustainability, sustainability, and one is synergy. Uh, the current climate, uh, the current climatic changes makes uh, us a more sensible designing uh, in order to minimi minimize uh, the environmental impact and to improve uh, the building performance. Forty percent energy saving can be realized through intelligent building uh, automation. Consider that uh, forty percent of the world's energy is consumed by building so we have to consider this factor to improve uh, our design of building okay and uh, also 21 percent of uh, greenhouse gas emission come from building so it's important to build to design and to building uh, new uh, construction sostenible. With smart design uh, uh, we can save energy and reduce pollution. Which factor all of the uh, habitat we are designing to be a sustainable one? Of course building material and uh, system choice uh, building contain containment and energy efficient efficiency and life cycle uh, assessment. 
This is an example of uh, my realization uh, about uh, how, uh, a building in uh, wood and uh, hemp and uh, uh, lime uh, wall. This is a good material because it's uh, completely natural and uh, also uh, have uh, mm, a, a um, very uh, important uh, performance uh, about acoustic and also thermic uh, isolation. This building is also comp completely recyclable, recyclable and uh, so uh, is a, a good solution, okay. which impacts uh, the habitat we are designing uh, on the environment. Uh, this is the question about this uh, pillar of uh, approach, uh, holistic approach. The last uh, uh, S of uh, my method is, uh, the s is a synergy because uh, the single expertise and competence are no more enough uh, to manage uh, intricate and complex issues, so working synergy is necessary and uh, every expert needs to handle communication, personal and professional leadership instrument at his or her best. Uh, how to create synergies? Uh, through leadership, communication, common targets, and uh, sharing uh, values uh, about this. I conclude, a healthy and peaceful uh, environment make uh, our children and us happy. Thank you for uh, attention. Thank you, Giuseppe. Questions, comments? Please. Soundscape uh, with a combination of the uh, three S S's. So yeah, is uh, so the sound is is uh, including uh, serenity. When we design, uh, we we uh, front time. front time. When we approach with. Uh, as of serenity, we study uh, the quality of uh, our habitat uh, uh, about uh, color, sound, uh, and harmony of uh, material, uh, uh, material and uh, shapes. Uh, everything we study, we study the the the, the balance of this element. We we concern uh, we um, our study uh, uh, concern uh, uh, domestic uh, habitat. So um, not I think is enough uh, uh, to have uh, good music. Or <laughs> okay. Okay. <coughs> Some more short questions, please. It depends the target and depend the goal that we 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 want to obtain. Uh, but w we we consider everything when uh, it depends also. For example, wood uh, construction no but uh, no old people like this because they they feel no. No safety, but it is not like that, for example. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Giuseppe Salomone, for thank this uh, interesting presentation about the holistic approach uh, to design. And let's go to the last presentation of this uh, session. So I call to the floor Luigi Bartolomei from the University of Bologna. Yes, I. <coughs> 
Uh, yeah, to do my premise, saying that I'm honored being here, invited by Professor Garay and uh, Dario Dorazio. Thank you so much for your invitation. And uh, of course, I'm, I speak from a different perspective because I actually teach in the Department of Architecture and also in the Theological Faculty of Emilia Romagna, so you can understand that my perspective is quite different from the other one you have listened to today. Uh, the question is, is there a specific silence inside European cemeteries, or at least Western cemeteries? Of course, I do speak about this kind of cemeteries because the other ones, the oriental one, uh, are full of cultural traces I am not used to deal with. So I will speak, of course, of Western countries. Because you know that uh, there was a time uh, when uh, cemeteries were inside urban environments and so cemeteries were not place of silence. Here we can see, for example, uh, the Cimetière de saint Innocent in Paris. It was at the very center of uh, Paris town, and uh, so the dead could hear the sound of the bell, the sound of political debates, the sound of priors, inside and outside the cemetery itself. Of course, we have to add also uh, people buried inside the churches, apud sanctos, apud ecclesiae. So there was a complete mix between the dead and the living in historical times. This was possible thanks to a total overlap between the civil society, the civil community, and the Christian concept of Ecclesia, which dominated the European society from Middle Age up to the Enlightenment. The concept of Ecclesia as a society implicates the continuity between the dead and the living, since the Christian community was thought basing on this communion between the dead ones and the living ones. The fracture between these two words uh, b began with the Enlightenment and with the consequences of a Cartesian rationality, we can say, which uh, implicate the first researches on uh, hygienic and uh, um, health uh, laws. And uh, as you can see uh, in this picture, a series of wagons with corpses, with six million corpses, a number which will come again in uh, European history, unluckily, will be uh, digged out and uh, uh, carried brought to other place from uh, Le Cimetière de Innocents to uh, the suburban areas close to Paris in a procession which took 15 months from, um, from December 1785 up to January 1788. This was the sign of a total fracture between the dead and the living of a, a Caesar we, we have not yet yielded, is not uh, reconciled, there is still this fracture in our Western society. Cemeteries are away from the cities and uh, somehow they can be considered the dual of our cities. Well, of course, uh, we have to underline that also during the Roman age, the cemeteries and funeral monuments were away from uh, urban walls because of the law from 12 tables. Uh, it was uh, not allowed to bury people inside uh, urban walls. And as you can see here, in a town which disappeared already in the third century before Christ, a few monuments uh, were built immediately outside Carsule. But I want to underline that this is completely another issue. 
This is not the sign of uh, a break between the living and the dead one. This was a way to make the ancestors close to the road to announce the history of the town. This was a dynamic relationship between the living one and the dead. The dead when the one welcomed the people coming into the town, telling by means of the architectural structures the history and the backgrounds of the town itself. Now we are facing into a completely different uh, situation, where there is a frontier, there is a fence. So the thesis we want to define is, uh, first, silence is a result of a loss. Silence is the result of a crucial and fatal break which is difficult to absorb or to heal. Second, this fatal break is the death of analogical thinking and analogical knowledge and the survival of analytical thinking only. This fatal break is due to the fact that myths and even religions will be considered as objects of knowledge but not any more ways to the knowledge and wisdom. Silence is the only space where to perceive a mystical participation with other beings. Well, I, I'm not sure I will have the time to explain all this point, so I will arrive up to a certain moment and then, of course, in the final proceeding you will, you will know a more, a more analytical description of this point. Um, first of all, uh, we have to say that uh, there is uh, this break uh, which is well described by poets. For example, here we have a quotation by Foscolo, uh, Sepolcri, and, uh, and yet Novello now seats the graves away from Pius eyes. This is a way in which Foscolo described the uh, cemeteries uh, uh, being uh, built outside of urban fences. So there is a boundary, a duel of the city. From one side, we are facing the city of the life, from the other, the city of the dead. From the one side, the dynamic, the typical way of markets, of trades. And the other one, the static, permanence. From one side, words, which go fast, one after the other. And from the other, silence. Uh, since, um, of course, we can say that uh, the silence of cemeteries is not the absence of rumors. The silence of cemeteries is not the, si uh, the total absence of sounds. And is not the acoustic void of uh, an anechoic chamber. The specific silence of cemeteries is the one which follows the absence of speaking. The lack of words generates the proper silence of cemeteries. So we can also face uh, on this fracture the affable for, it's mean uh, in Latin, uh, the ability to speak, and the ineffable, the impossibility to speak, not determined by a law, but a common behavior. We don't speak inside cemeteries. You know that here uh, there is uh, appear a problem which is not so so. Um, it's very important. It's very deep. How to deal with the famous description of man given by Aristotle? How if we do not speak? It means that this definition, the hon logon ekon, which define man as the as the one who speaks who the words, well, is somehow suspended in some cemeteries. So we can go into a, a first statement. The first statement is uh, cemeteries are places for a falling back experience, that is for a regression towards a, a, a protological or even a prelogical, I want, I want to quote Levi Brühl, is a, even if it's a, a strange, um, I mean, particular anthropologist, a 
pre-logical condition whose expression is silence. Silence, this kind of silence, introduces man to a sacred primitiveness. Also Dante and Agostino looked into this sacred primitiveness, but they found inside it the sign of the Christian God. Now, of course, the answer is completely different. We are facing just an interrogative mark, probably. Second point, always from an uh, anthropological perspective, silence in cemetery, or in cemeterial environment, is the proof that contemporary man has no words to face the loss of a beloved one. Moravia in Kafka, speaking about important uh, authors, uh, tell us about this experience. We have no words. First point, uh, prayers and mantra are considered, could be considered, are from some other others considered as an antidote to the frightening and ambiguous dimension of silence. Because silence can also frightening, can also scare people. But also we have to face silence not in an anthropological uh, uh, point of view, but from a phenomenological point of view. If we go uh, the, the um, opposition between cemeteries and uh, um, towns can be also the one between words and silence. But the words are signs of temporariness, movement, you have seen how many new words appear, especially in English. Soundscape is a new word. Even the concepts which are absorbed by the words are temporary. Temporary is movement, transience. And on the opposite side, the silence is not just something which is realized but the absence of the sound. Max Ernst says that the sound appears because of the absence of words. It's a condition which is already present. It's always present because silence is part of eternity. Persistent, uh, static and eternity, space of ineffability are the one of silence. Is there a behavior, is there a way to sit in front of the silence, is there a shape proper of the silence, both of the body, both of architecture? Probably yes. It has been already defined by Leopardins, his extremely famous poem, already translated into English in 1850, and so uh, quite uh, early respect to the original composition, 1818. But sitting and gazing boundless spaces beyond that more than human silences and profoundest quiet. These silences are not the absence of rumors. These silences are the way in which you are connected with the landscape. The landscape you see is connected to you by the landscape you hear. The absence of words, the absence of a rational Cartesian thinking. And there is a way to stay in front of this silence, sitting and gazing. You sit and gaze, and you need a limit. Without a physical limit, you won't perceive any kind of uh, infinitive horizon. And it's because of that that the poem at the end cannot answer that there is a God in this silence. But it's just a fake illusion, a fake self-illusion of an eternity. Because we are speaking of a man who, was already, who already knew the uh, the, our, our world, our world which is connected, deeply connected with uh, sciences, with a different way, with a different but very dominant way to reach the truth. 
the only way we can reach the truth is by analytical thinking, not by analogical one. From the architectural point of view, this sitting and gazing is, is incredible, uh, represented by the Freemason, of course, as you can see also in the shape, uh, architect, uh, Etienne Louis Bouillet, the French architect, during, just before the French Revolution. And uh, this is a famous uh, monument to, to Rem, which for the mass, the incredible huge structure was supposed to leave the man without words. In front of the giant pyramid, which stays as, he said, the mountain stay, you can only be silent. The mass, like time, is a sign of persistency, of immutability. His goal was immutability. The inside of this was this. But in uh, contemporary time, uh, the, mm, in a feeble way, the hermeting, and uh, if you want, with uh, oriental connection design, we know in this kind is the one by Carlos Carpa, and I'm concluding, uh, of which I invite you to see the beautiful documentary by uh, Ricardo De Cal, Memorie Causa, a documentary which is uh, exactly uh, linked to the acous acoustic uh, um, landscape of this cemetery, and uh, of which I wanted to, to show you a few uh, fragments, but unfortunately it doesn't work now. Uh, so you can see here the pavilion, the pavilion to have this experience of silence, and of course is a pavilion, if you go inside the pavilion standing, I mean without being seated, you cannot see anything, you have to sit to see. And as soon as you sit on that bench, you saw in, this, in the middle of this lake, and you can see that the primitive primitiveness of, of silence uh, somehow is mirroring to the primitiveness of the water, all the four uh, primitive elements are mirroring each other in silence. Sitting on the bench there you can see to contemplate, uh, which is the exact proper attitude of silence, contemplate, because in silence, which is, means pers uh, permanence, you can have all the actions together, so also life and death, as you can see the tombs of Briance at the opposite, the wall, the wall which is lobbed in order to make the landscape enter, enter inside the landscape. To make enter the sound of the bell, the mountains, Monte Grappa, where important battles were fought in the First World War, your eyes can contemplate and your ear can uh, listen to the music of natural landscape. So, in these cemeteries, the silence is a precise quality that allows you to have this connection without words, for which we have no more words, unfortunately, with the total landscape, the one of the ancestors. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you very much. Questions, remarks, vision.
from other days of the year, which we probably look for more attention. So here is important the connection between sound and tension, concentration and sound. These sounds can be changed. But it's not always that. There are some uh, yes. during the time of the year, exactly in oxide. Uh, yes, yes, but uh, maybe if you have other questions, we can collect them. And, uh To answer this question, uh, I say you no immediately. <laughs> in Italy, in the, in the Italian cemeteries at least, and above all in the northern one, there is no, but also in the southern, there is no limitation provided by technological solutions to achieve this kind of uh, uh, silent environment. And uh, because it's uh, a mark of culture, a mark of behavior, which is uh, in effect is indeed through what you said, which, is, uh, uh, which makes uh, a distinction between the northern part of the, part of the country and the southern part. I quote a book by Cartocci, uh, Geografia dell'Italia Cattolica, which in English should be Geography, geography of uh, Catholic Italy. And uh, he found more or less a line uh, of which differentiate behaviors uh, close by at the south of uh, Roma suburbs. But indeed, it's true that uh, this, uh, of course, I spoke, uh, especially of a season which is now, I want to say, um, we are now we are facing some evolution in cemeterial architecture and also in behaviors inside the architecture. And uh, of course, uh, this uh, presentation uh, Finishes more or less, uh, I think, uh, during uh, with the with the last year of the last millennium, because uh, from uh, now uh, we are facing uh, some changes. And uh, in fact, uh, uh, Edgar Morin, uh, who studied uh, since the origin the phenomenon of uh, cemeteries, in that, and uh, he wrote uh, *L'homme et la mort*. Uh, uh, the, the Man and Death, a famous essay, uh, translated into English and also in Italian, of course. But also in the last 10 years, he wrote exactly a new book uh, in which he began to look new attitudes towards the dead ones. Uh, and so, of course, we will see what uh, will happen. Uh, of course, in several example, like this one, which is a national monument, more or less, the atmosphere will be the same, will uh, remain the same, and maybe northern countries, cemeteries, the one of Le Laurent Asplund in uh, northern Europe, uh, the silence will be, will keep on being the answer to death. But we are facing big changes. Thank you so much. Thank you again to Luigi Bartolomei for this introduction. And uh, we're going to closing uh, the session. Thank you also to all the other speakers and to all of you for your uh, attention and your kind comments. And now it's time for lunch again. And, but please don't forget that we have many other issues. I think that uh, this, is a, this has been a, a very good beginning of the symposium. Now is lunch and then the visit and then of course, the afternoon session. Thank you very much.